Recording in progress. Uh, person, we, we did send a report to the portfolio committee. Sometime I don't have the date. But however, I requested uh, Mr. Mbazi Mashibiti to look at uh, the report that we had sent to the portfolio committee on the appointments uh, during COVID-19. Hence, I said I request him to, to, to at least to indicate um, the date on which we've sent the report. And, and what did the report uh, uh, contain? And then the second one, I think it's B uh, there. B, it was about the chief chief director. I will talk to that one and the one of, of, of Tandeka. Director SCM, it was a lateral transfer from DPME to Department of Women. The post of Director Evaluation, that was also filled from last year. Deputy Director Evaluation also was filled from last year. Deputy Director International Relations, that was also filled from last year. Deputy Director Governance and Compliance Rights of Persons with Disabilities. It was also filled from last year. Assistant Director International Relations filled from last year. And then Assistant Director Advocacy and Mainstreaming. Those positions were filled from last year. The position, because COVID is still here, there were subsequent appointments beyond that. The director, like we indicated, the director ICT, that was filled from uh, 15 July this year. And there were four positions filled in, in the secretariat, yet the gender-based violence. There was an administrative officer that was filled from one March this year. There were two deputy directors that were filled from June, and the director was filled from 1 July 20, uh, 2021. But also there was, there was a position that the secretaries and admin, the secretary of corporate filled from 1 May this year. The executive personal assistant to the DG was filled from 1 June, and then the secretary, the chief director, stakeholder coordination and outreach also was filled from 1 June this year. And there were positions also, chairperson, that were filled in ministries because ministries are governed by the ministerial and board. So those are contract appointments linked to the particular term of offices of the minister and deputy minister respectively. Thank you, 
ADG, and thank you, Chairperson. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure, Chairperson, whether you want to follow up with the questions or should I go to the next item on the agenda? No, uh, TG, uh, what we need to bring us on is the issues that we said uh, you need to deal with, uh, on issues that we said as the portfolio committee will follow up with. Okay, um, the, the two, the chief director and the DDG. Yeah. That uh, of uh, 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 the, the I can't hear. We were discussing issues of because remember uh, 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 the, those vacancies. Your network is bad, Chair. Your network is your network is bad. Chair, Chair, now, uh, it's it's the ones that we said you need to do. Yeah. No, earlier on we couldn't hear you. Let me try this. Um, can you hear me now, Titi? Yes, yes, yes. Titi? Yes. Thank you so much. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes, Okay, I was saying there were uh, 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 posts that were made, uh, were filled during COVID. And what the portfolio committee at the time have raised is whether proper procedures were followed uh, during that time. And then we said, you need to come back and give us a report. Because what Mbazima was presenting now is the post that were filled during that time. And but what was what what was a, 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 a concern from the portfolio committee? It's whether proper procedures were followed at that time. Okay, okay, okay. Even Do that one. Uh, okay, check. Uh, I just want to check whether Vusi, Vusi is here, the, the, intern, the, the internal audit. Um, because he, Val? Val? Val, isn't uh, Vusi not here? Chair, I am here uh, through chairperson. DG, I'm here. No, I, I was asking about Vusi because he needs need what the chairperson is asking for uh, in terms of the processes, whether did we follow correct processes or not. Even that one, the report was sent to the portfolio committee um, either last last year or, or January. So I was I wanted him to, to report on, on the, the processes. Um, whether uh, they followed the process, because there are two things, Chairperson. It's process has been followed. You can look at whether, yes, they've advertised, they've done this, they've done this. That was done. And I remember the report that he had sent was in terms of following whether the, 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 the advert the adverts were made and whether people were appointed um, according to the prescripts. He said it was done, but there were other issues that the, the Public Service Commission was going to investigate, which is beyond the Director General's uh, 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 mandate. In terms of uh, my mandate, we have reported. We have reported. Chair, maybe in the meantime, if we can uh, uh, do another matter, I'll call Vusi so that he can join and he can uh, um, indicate when exactly he sent the report and um, he can even maybe read what was the conclusion of that report. However, I know that we have submitted that report. He did the, 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 the report 
and it was sent to the to the portfolio committee. Is the chair still here? Or is she struggling? Chair? Sorry, members, we will just check on the chair. Sorry, Chair. I was calling um, the person who will give you the, the report. Chair, can, can we hear? It seems as if your network is 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 a problem. Yes, I can hear you now. Yeah, I okay. network you may be a problem this side. You can continue. Okay. No, Chair, I was saying there were two things last year that happened. One was the internal process where the internal audit was tasked to uh, investigate the process followed, but also there's a process where a public service commission also requested all the information and all the documents. They are still investigating that process. So from our side, the report from internal audit was submitted. So that's the person that we've called because he's a director that doesn't normally attend this meeting, but he's going to pull the report to look at um, uh, when was the report submitted and what did the report say. Okay, okay, DG, it's fine. Let the uh, let him present the report. Yes, well, um, he, will, he will join just now. Let me check if he's already joined. Okay. He is still joining. Oh, he's still joining. Okay. And then uh, under HR, what else uh, um, is outstanding from us? Um, I'm, I'm checking a uh, 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 DG, the other things, the other reports. Uh, the other one is the issue pertaining uh, the chief director disability. I think it, it was amongst uh, 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 the, the the issues that are supposed to be dealt with by the committee. Um, uh, the, the DDG will be the last one. The issue of the DDG will be the last last one. Uh, we want we must start with the these ones first, and then end up uh, and uh, end up with the the one of the DDG. DDG, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, on the appointment of uh, uh, um, the chief director, um, advocacy and mainstreaming um, in the rights of persons with disabilities, the department is waiting for the Public Service Commission to come up with a, with a finding so that we can be able to act on the finding of the Public Service Commission. Okay, um, uh, so in terms of the, the complainant, you didn't uh, 
uh, get the letter from the complainant? No, the department, we, we, oh, eh, no, 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 no. The, the complainant sent a letter inquiring uh, in terms of who got the post, what were the processes and whatever. We responded because he wanted to go to the bargaining council, the PSSB, I think, see, the public service uh, um, a, a, a bargaining council. Okay. However, yeah. on the, um, I think, beginning of this month, the department received a certificate from the bargaining council that he has withdrawn uh, his, um, his complaint. So, um, but that doesn't mean that the, the Public Service Commission can't continue. It can continue investigating because he didn't withdraw from the Public Service Commission. He complained to, D, to DPSA and the DPSA referred the matter to, to Public Service Commission. So from government side, government can continue investigating. In fact, it is continuing to investigate uh, the matter um, until maybe he withdraws. But also, even if he says he withdraws, if government finds that there was something that is untoward, government can still make a decision, a finding that either it was an irregular appointment or, or whatever. And the Public Service Commission is authorized to do that. It is the, the, um, in government, uh, the, 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 the unit that is authorized to say it was, it was a, a, an unauthorized or a, an illegal appointment or whatever the outcome that they would come with, which is um, something that I cannot do as a, as a DG because I don't even have the, 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 the delegations to appoint those people. So I cannot make a decision. I can't come here and say I've investigated and this was the finding. So public service can continue despite whether this person has withdrawn from the from the bargaining council or not okay okay, okay. Uh, so um the, the 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 person you say he was she, he must he or she must give us a a, a report on the other uh, position uh, is with, is from the department, ne? is the audit, is a person from internal your department. Audit. Internal audit, yes. Remember you said uh, you wanted someone to look at whether the, the, the processes, because as I said, that it's different. I can still appoint certain people, but having followed the correct procedures. So in terms of procedurally, that's what he was going to report on. But the overall finding whether the appointment, because I do not appoint, is my superior who appoints. So they are, the Public Service Commission, it's a constitutional body that can decide uh, whichever way. So hence we're waiting for the Public Service Commission. Um, it seems as if he's not yet joined. Vosi, Val is Vosi here? I can't see him on, unless he's using a different. Vosi, yeah, I've sent the Chair, he, uh, he's, he's, he's joining. He had to run his computer and join. So I'll check on him. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, DG, there were two yeah. issues that were supposed to be investigated. The first issue is whether they have followed proper procedures to make that appointment. The second one was for the issue of nepotism that. Uh, the person who is said to have been appointed is married to the head of human resource. So there were two issues that were supposed to be investigated, whether yes. those allegations are true or false. So yes. There is, yes. So uh, 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 the person who must come in and give us a report must give us a report on, on those two issues. Yes, yes. Yes. I remember, I uh, remember you had asked the question. Now you remember now, ne? Yes, um, and he, he did um, um, uh, look at the yes. issues revolving around that matter. Yes. Yeah, and uh, if you remember, in fact, the, uh, 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 that was not the only case because the said person was also appointed previously that your age in the head of the human resource, uh, there were allegations that also he appointed other family members in other positions 
I think our research uh, 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 team must please give us those reports because I thought that you have give, you have sent all those reports to the DG. We can't be found uh, 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 thinking and thinking, uh, Kashifa. You uh, were supposed to have sent all those uh, 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 issues to the DG. That's what was supposed to have happened because now it's, 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 it looks clumsy. I, uh, 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 the DP doesn't have the information before her. So you need to give the DG all the outstanding matters in, in, in relation to human resource. Because now it's gonna be unfair that the DG must answer one by one, give DG all the issues so that as she responds on behalf of the department, she reads and on, 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 on the reports on things that were outstanding at that time. Can I come in? As yeah. I'm hearing about the appointment of, of, of relatives for the first time. Yes, the documents were sent yesterday and I, I sent them to our legal unit uh, to look into them. But also, okay. I, uh, the documents, as they come from the complainant, the complainant who send you uh, the information uh, because we have to discuss um, um, the processes involved in, in this matter. So some of the things I yeah. will not be able yeah. to respond because yeah. of, of certain things. However, the issue of appointment of relatives, was it reported? Because that's what I would like to know because I don't know, I, I, it, it might have happened, but I don't know any, any relative besides the wife of the chief director and which is being investigated. Uh, that yeah, one is don't want to, yes. You know what? I don't want to 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 to, to be unfair to you. Uh, the res the research team will look at all the let the correspondence that we have received as the portfolio committee, so that we can send to you as the department and look at all those matters, and then so that you can be able to come to the portfolio committee and and respond appropriately. So we, okay. might, we, we can't be unfair to you. If you don't okay. have all those things uh, before you, uh, we, uh, let's leave it, ne? those ones, so that you get all the, uh, the, they must look for all the correspondence that we have received and then give it to you. But the one of the chief director, you have received that one, the one that we are talking about now. Uh, let's stick to that one so that, uh, 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 we, we finalize that one and then we, we, we pass it so that all the outstanding matters were done with them. Okay, so okay. If, I yeah, was looking yeah, whether the, I don't want, I don't want to, uh, uh, to be unfair to you. Uh, we, don't, we, must, we can't be like that. If they didn't send you all the correspondence that we have received, as they, it's just unfortunately that our committee secretary is sick and uh, uh, Umendi is acting on, on behalf of our, uh, our, our committee secretary. So she might not have all the documents, but uh, our research team, they do have all the, the correspondence. We we'll look at all the correspondence uh, and then we'll send to your, to your department. It's fine. Thank let's, you, Chair. But Chair, before, 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 before we proceed, before we proceed, Chair, I just want to understand something. Uh, public servants are appointed um, uh, through the public service administration, the public service act and the regulations which outline the processes that they need to follow. So, uh, and they must exhaust internal processes uh, before yeah. then they can come to, come to parliament, but also nothing in there says they go to parliament. They can go to court, which would have the final say. So I'm not sure. Uh, 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 the people that are sending the, the communication that are abusing the system or, or what is going on be, because now it seems as if they, there's crossing of lines or whatever. I don't mm -hmm. know. I'm, I'm trying to, to, to understand. I hope the advisors no, also... We are going to help you on that one. We are going okay. to help you on that one because okay. uh, 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 we don't also want people to jump internal uh, 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 processes and come to the portfolio committee to report issues before uh, 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 registering their grievances. 
they must follow previous procedures. But you know, sometimes Titi, when we get correspondence, we get correspondence from uh, uh, people that we don't know. Uh, uh, some they write anonymous. So sometimes dealing with letters of anonymous is difficult. So, but we don't want to be unfair to yourself, you know. Uh, those that uh, 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 are administrative matters, uh, but when there's a complaint in us doing our oversight, we will raise those issues with the department. And then you, it's, it's you who need to respond to us that, Chair, this is how we've dealt with this matter, and uh, 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 we've done one, two, three, four, because uh, we don't deal with administrative uh, 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 things, you know. Uh, so. Uh, we'll deal with issues as, as, as they are raised, but other things will tell you, this one this is not for us, it's for you, you know. For, yes. for instance, the post, the, post, the, 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 the post that we are talking about now of the chief director, uh, the complainant wrote to us uh, to complain that uh, this is what has happened in the department. And, and, and unfortunately, it was all over the media. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and there, there was no way that we will not deal with that matter. So we'll have to deal with that matter because we are a portfolio that deals with issues of disabled people, dis people living with disabilities. So, and the, in, our organizations also uh, complained that uh, they are not satisfied in the manner in which your department has dealt with that appointment uh, because uh, they were with required skills that were supposed to have been appointed and but the department chose to appoint a person who does not even qualify for that position. So with that one, at least we can deal with that one so that you us on what exactly happened, you know, and, 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 and we can't deal with things that are allegations, allegations, with disability. To, to deal with those. And even us as the portfolio committee, when we get our report, um, yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, uh, issues so that we don't pack many things and then we go back and come back and uh, we, we must just finalize all these matters once and for all. Yes. So, yes. so um, maybe the person that was yes, yes, great. Yes, great. to have done do audit, uh, I hope that is not that a, yeah, oh, okay. yes. can, can he take us through? Is it a she or a he? He, okay, can we take us through? Vos? No, oh, it's a he, okay. Yes. Good day, DJ. Thank you. Uh, you uh, 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 Mr. Shongwe, last year or early this year, the Portfolio Committee requested uh, the, uh, the department to look into the process that was followed in the appointment of the Chief Director and other posts. And besides what the department sent to them in terms of how many posts, they also wanted to know whether uh, the procedure was correct and whether there was nepotism or not. And you wrote a report that we sent to them. Yes, TJ. Uh, when was it? DJ, uh, uh, I think it was early this year. I cannot remember. Can you please it? open your video camera? Thank you, Chairperson. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, DG. Chair. DG, as uh, I was saying that uh, it was uh, sometimes early this year, 
I cannot remember exactly when was it. Yes, uh, when we 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 finalized the report, and we've sent. But to do to that, we in the main we 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 looked at uh, the process in the appointment of the chief director. Uh, uh, that uh, uh, chief director in uh, and in in children, and we also look at uh, additional ten uh, positions that were appointed uh, during the time. Uh, I will apologize. I, I might be just a bit uh, ill prepared a bit because I just received the message now and this uh, particular report. It was finalized, I think, somewhere early this year, around January or February. I might maybe uh, uh, not talk to it uh, properly. But I'll try to go to the conclusions that we've come uh, through for each and every position. Um, we'll, we'll see if maybe. Let me question you first. Yes. yes. Uh, you yes, must know yes. that uh, when you are in parliament, you are called by parliament, you are under oath. Ne? So whatever yes. you give us to us tomorrow, yes. you must be accountable for it. So, yes. Mina, if uh, we are not sure about the issues yes. that were raised at the uh, time by the portfolio committee, Please don't even start if you are not sure, yeah, so that you yes. can be ready and give an accurate report. Chairperson, because maybe... tomorrow you will be accountable for for, so for for things that you have said in Parliament, and it will be unfortunate that you are not going to be able to withdraw those things after the meeting. Yeah, so yes, if you are not ready, uh, for safety's sake, and you are not uh, 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 abreast with the issues that were raised at that time. Uh, of course, you is only report, and we are not ready. We are not prepared. You better uti. Yes. At the, at the, at the, at the, uh, we had an issue with CGE where yes. a commissioner came and said things in the meeting. And when yes. we said uh, they must go and investigate, remember when we say go and investigate, uh, we want a report, then the commissioner wanted to change the statement and it's late. Yes. Sir. So now like it's us who said things that she said in the meeting, but it's not us. Yes. So that's why I'm, I'm, I'm questioning you even before you start. Yes. So that if you are not ready, just say it. No, I was not prepared. Let give me a chance. I'll go look at this thing and then give you a, 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 the correct uh, report. I hope that we will save thank you very much. Uh, indeed, uh, I think I will not do a thorough justice to this particular report because it's an 82 page report. Yes, and as I indicated, uh, it was concluded early this year. Some of the facts might know. I need to go through it. Then I will request the chairperson to give him an opportunity to prepare thoroughly on this particular report so that I can be able to present factual report to the committee. Yeah. 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 Uh, thank you very much. Uh, 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 honorable members, I think uh, what uh, uh, Mr. Shongwe have said now, it's fair so that uh, we, we must not have what we, we, we experience in the other entity. So maybe uh, it's, it will be correct for us as the portfolio committee to allow the department and the DG to be prepared enough so that they can be able to present a, 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 the report. Uh, can yes, I hear from yes. you, Honorable 
members? Can I get uh, yes, honorable chair. members? Chair, ma, chair, chair oh. Oh, okay, ma, ma, I'm going to wear a vula in my camera. Yako, yeah, but will the camera map be so cool? Sabotage. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for your sympathy and your guidance, and your, your, you are very much indeed the chairperson because there is no asina yenye ndebe siba sopi le ngayo kodwa we need this a comprehensive report i agree with you sir, chairperson that we must give them time so that they prepare and come to us with a clear and understanding report thank you nyabonga honorable mamfengwa uh, Honorable Masiko. Thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson, and greetings. Good afternoon to yourself and colleagues once again. Chair, I think it's a fair enough uh, comment and request on our part as a portfolio committee. Um, it would be also important, Chair, to reiterate the words that you had said at the beginning, to request uh, both our research team as well as the Secretariat to send the clear outline uh, in terms of our expectations as a portfolio committee when they send communication to the department. It should be clear so that we avoid such uh, instances where we have to yet again uh, defer the matters that we are expecting to discuss in a portfolio committee. Had the communication been clear probably, the department would have been in a better space to prepare for this meeting. So it's just a request for future chairperson when we are having meetings such as these, where we have specific expectations on matters that we want to discuss as a portfolio committee so that they are able to better prepare themselves and be in a position to present all the required uh, documentation. Thank you very much. But I support uh, um, the proposal chairperson and the request on the side of uh, the department uh, that we defer this that uh, they are in a better position the next time to, to, to give us the necessary information that we require. Thank you, Chair. Much, uh, Honorable uh, Thank you very much, uh, Babu Ngobo. Honorable Ngobo. Uh, thank you, Chairperson, and good evening to everyone. Uh, Chairperson, I also wanted to say that I agree that we must give the department the chance to come up with a full report next time so that we get something that is factual. And as you indicated, Chairperson, that everything that is being discussed in Parliament is, is being said I under oath. So it's very important for the department to be uh, well prepared and give us something that is factual. Thanks. Thank you very much, Ebabu Ngobo. Uh, Honorable Mamsonti and Honorable Natasha. Mm, Kibuli, Sir Chairperson, Kibuli, Sir Department, and Kibuli, Sir Namalung, uh, my colleagues, a uh, committee. Uh, Inova Sautulingo may one, uh, Chairperson, they must go back and uh, prepare their report so that they can come with it in fully and understandable. Thank you so much. Thank you, Masonti. Honorable Tasha. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. I, I, I think it's quite disappointing um, um, to get to a meeting and the department is not prepared. If they have done a report, which they claimed the report was done early this year, uh, it's easy to retrieve a report. You, have, you claim you have sent it to the committee. You can just go and check it and, and, and get a report. But to, to come here and then you claim you are, you are ill-prepared, you are wasting our time. And we don't have time for games. Because we are getting reports in media on your appointments that is not following of procedures and, and, and 
we are getting letters as members of parliament. And then to waste our time and our schedule to come here to a meeting and then people don't have a report. I don't take kindly to that. I really don't take kindly to that. The department must go back and stop uh, playing uh, games with us and footsie footsie. We don't have time for that. We want a report and a proper report when we are coming back here. We want to know why are people are being hired and the proper procedure are not followed. Consequences must happen, Chairperson. This can't go on like this. This department can't continue to uh, do as they please and no consequences are being done. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, you, you are not audible, Chair, but I think you said DG. Uh, Chair. Uh, uh, I said, yes, DG. Yes, I, I said, your network is very, very bad. Your network is very bad. We can't hear you. Go back. You, you, you were cutting. Your network is very yeah. bad. Your network is very bad. Still, we can't hear you. I'm not sure whether the chair wanted me to respond because I do want to respond. The, the colleagues, the, the chairperson's network has just dropped. Uh, we can pick up here that um, she has left the meeting due to poor network. But before you also respond, uh, DG, we'd also like you to also um, attend to the issue of the report itself because I have just checked with the team uh, as uh, as members, we have not received this report that you are referring to. If you can give us clarity on the matter on whether or not the report was sent to us as a committee since we had requested it late last year. And also if it has been sent, who exactly it has been sent to because it seems like no one has given indication as to who the report was sent to, we have not received it. You may go ahead. And, uh, and and respond, DG. Okay. Um. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um. As indicated, um. I'm calling my PA to look for the dates uh, in terms of when it was sent, and also she will uh, check with the parliamentary officer. I know for sure that the report was sent to the portfolio committee, either January or February, just like the one that Mbazima referred to in November. So um, we are not wasting the portfolio committee's time. The reports were sent uh, during that time. Now, the, 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 as you can see, the program says HR matters. HR matters, the chairperson on, on Wednesday, I think, yeah, on Tuesday, uh, she had referred to the matters of Mkenge um, uh, and um, uh, uh, Putima Belebe. So those are the two matters that we were ready about. The other matters, if we have known, because the reports have been concluded long ago and they were submitted. So um, there's nothing about a, 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 maybe somebody going to say something under oath or lying or whatever, because the reports were already sent. So when we send the report, it will be resending what had already been sent before. Um, however, the communication uh, 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 that came from the portfolio committee is the one that didn't indicate that those reports that have been uh, submitted to the portfolio committee are the ones that we need to prepare and present on, on them. It is not us.
So um, um, Vusi can send even the report, as he said, that it's an 82-page report. He can email it now to, to, to the Secretariat. He'll send it to Bongi. Bongi will send it. And the report that Mbazima referred to, he will send it to, to Bongi. They will send it to, to the Secretariat now. And if the Secretariat is available to distribute it to the members, they will distribute it so that they see that we had sent it. The reports are already there. It's not something that we, we are working on now. We responded at the time when because there were time frames that were set that within uh, within which we were supposed to to respond okay uh, did you thank, thank you. you very much uh, for the response uh, we would really request also on our side as parliament um dg that uh, we look into our systems as well and check on whether the facts are correct that you have presented to us. But we also appreciate the fact that maybe there should be some form of a resending of the report. So we are able to also look into it. Uh, as I indicated that the chairperson's network has dropped colleagues, she has indicated uh, at DG that we will be calling a follow-up meeting to deal specifically with this matter, having engaged properly with the report itself. I will then request you, DG, to then move on to the next item. Sorry. The, 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 the case of uh, the chief director, RPD, I had already referred to that, that we're waiting for, for the Public Service Commission because uh, with the, the bargaining council, the, the, the complainant has withdrawn the matter from the bargaining council uh, because that's where the department was going to uh, report or, or respond to the issues. So the Public Service Commission, we're waiting for them. They are not bound, as I said even earlier on that, they are not bound by the fact that he withdrew, he withdrew his complaint from the bargaining council. They can continue. And if they find that there was a, a, some irregularity or illegality, they will deal with it. And then the second matter, uh, that is a, a, a Tandekam Trenges matter. I want to point out to the portfolio committee that Ms. Mpenge took this matter to the courts. It is still in court. We were not the ones who took it to court. She took it to court. And from the department side, the disciplinary hearing process has already initiated. So uh, this matter is sub -judicate. We cannot come here and, and say, uh, she did this or we did this or whatever, the courts will decide uh, in terms of whether the process is correct or not. So from our side, all I want to say is that the matter is sub -judicate. And maybe to say sub uh, to explain so that all of us are in the same page, um, this matter is before the court. And when the matter is before the court, is said to be sub -judicate. We cannot be discussing the evidence uh, here. Uh, um, uh, so from our side, that's what we can say. This matter is in court and the processes within the department is that the disciplinary processes have been initiated. Um, I saw the documents. I wouldn't even want to go to, to the point where I say uh, it is not correct or it is correct or whatever, the court will decide. Okay, I think that, that that is my submission on the issue of, of, of Mr. Tandek, I'm saying. Okay. Oh, the network is bad here. I think the chair also has been kicked out. The we game. Honorable Masite, you're also kicked out. I'm so sorry, uh, uh, colleagues. You know, the network in the, at the parks is quite bed. Um, we, we, we are all in Cape Town today and we're experiencing network challenges. Um, uh, I, I did hear your submission, DG, on the issue of the matter currently being before the court. I will, um, 
I think there's really nothing uh, also we can we can we can attend to in on this matter in relation to what you have submitted but one would like to know currently whether uh, the, the 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 official that is um, in question is currently at work or not uh, whilst the matter is still uh, being attended to by the courts and um, i saw that the hand of uh, honorable natasha is up I will give an opportunity to 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 engage. No, thank you, Honorable uh, uh, Fikile. You you have taken straight to my question, so uh, we would like the uh, the DG to 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 answer that. And um, yeah, let, let us not go further on matters, uh, DG. We know. Um, matters that is before the court we can't delve into it as parliament we have rules given to that so we are perfectly known and empowered to know the matters that are sub judicate it's no new term to us so just answer on that one that honorable vicky said thank you 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 may respond uh, dg yes chair um she is at work and she refuses to take instructions. That's all I can say. Um, yeah, that's all I can say for now. DJ, I'll go back to the comment because you did uh, touch a bit on the matter on uh, the meeting that we had on Tuesday. You are telling us that she is at work, but she's not working, in fact, but she's earning a, a salary. Is that what you are telling us? Yes. Um. Okay. Colleagues, this is uh, the report from the department regarding this matter. We can't discuss it uh, at length because of uh, the matter being before the courts. But in essence, the department is informing us that the official consent uh, is currently earning a salary and uh, she is not working. How long has this matter been going, uh, going on for DG? Again, if you may remind us. Uh, when I arrived in the department, already I arrived in August, um, she was not doing anything. I think uh, uh, there was a time where she was she was uh, uh, suspended and, and dismissed, and she was reinstated. Reinstatement means you'll be paid for until the the, the, the day when you were you were dismissed. Um, so she was reinstated. I think uh, early 2020 or 2019, and since then she she has not been doing anything. So when I arrived in August, um, of, as I said, that the matter, it's just that I do not want to say many things because the matter is in court. However, all I can say is that when I arrived in August, I, went, I tried to bring on board. However, it has failed. So as, as, as the director general who is responsible to ensure that the fiscus of the state uh, uh, is used for the purpose, so I have to deal with that matter. So that's all I can say. Okay, thank you very much, uh, DG. Um, the IT, can you accept the chairperson? She has been on, in the waiting room for the past 10 minutes and waiting to be accepted, accepted in the meeting. DG, I think there is a, another item in the agenda that has not been addressed. If uh, you may go ahead and um, answer that, 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 uh, yes, Chair. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you very much again, uh, colleagues. We will give this opportunity to our legal team to also give us a bit of advice as the committee on how this matter ought to be dealt with on our side as a portfolio committee.
Mr. Tejane, your, your mic is on mute, if you may unmute your mic, please. Uh, thank you very much, Chairperson. I hope that I'm, I'm audible. May, may I go ahead? Yes, you are visible and audible. You may go ahead. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chairperson, uh, Honorable Members and uh, colleagues. Look, Chair, our attitude is simple. Perhaps let, let's start with the jurisdictional issues. <clears throat> now, one of the powers, Chair, uh, that is bestowed upon the NA, which of course uh, this committee is, a, is, a, is an extension of, um, is, is found in section 52, sorry, 55, 2 A and B. Uh, uh, the constitution directs that the NA must provide for mechanisms to ensure that all executive organs of state in the national sphere of government are accountable to it. And I think section 55 2B uh, says that to maintain says that the NA must provide for mechanisms to maintain oversight of the exercise of national executive authority and any organ of state. Now, Chair, uh, that is also echoed uh, in our NA rules, which is the ninth edition, in Rule 2271B2, where it says that a portfolio committee must, ma must maintain oversight of any executive organ of state falling within its portfolio. And that's what we're here uh, about, Chairperson. Uh, rule 2271C goes on to say that a portfolio committee may monitor, investigate, inquire into, and make recommendations concerning any such executive organ of state. Now, the, the, the point that we want to make sure is that uh, the, 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 the fact of the matter is that uh, these sections I've just referred to uh, give jurisdiction to this committee to look uh, into this issue. Now, uh, I'm going to cut to the chase, Chair. Um, I'm not going to waste your time. I think, Chair, the, the biggest bee in the bonnet, or, or rather the, the elephant in the room, is the issue of the reinstatement of the DTG in line with the arbitration award. Uh, i.e. on the same terms and conditions of employment that had applied uh, prior to her dismissal. Now, we've, we've scanned through the documentation, uh, Chairperson, which was sent to us. And if you look at the minister's letter dated 11th of November uh, 2019, the first paragraph, it, it, it echoes uh, exactly those sentiments. Now, Chair, you will uh, appreciate that uh, there have been two arbitration awards. Uh, which have been given in favor of the TTG. Um, the fact of the matter, Chair, is that the restructuring process started in 2014, uh, and this scuffle between the TTG and the department uh, uh, commenced, I think, in 2015. It's, it's been six years now, uh, and it seems as if uh, it's, 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 it's still unresolved. Uh, of course, uh, at great cost, uh, of course, to, 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 to the department itself. And I think that on its own chair um, uh, justifies the fact that this matter is serving uh, before you. Now, the difficulty that we have, though, chair, is that uh, there are contempt of court proceedings uh, that are currently underway regarding the implementation of the arbitration award. Now, now chair, as a rule of thumb, uh, the, the, the DG is correct to say that this matter is up to decay. Uh, you, you, you will recall that uh, Rule 89 uh, of the NA rules directs that uh, no member may reflect upon the merits of any matter on which a judicial decision in a court of law is pending. However, we, we want to make the point, Chair, that uh, we acknowledge the fact that Parliament is not sterilized by that rule in fulfilling its constitutional and oversight functions and obligations. Now, Chair, if you look at section 195 of the Constitution, which is the section, I think it's chapter 10, which speaks um, about uh, various issues uh, pertaining to, uh, the public, to the public administration, there are certain uh, principles and values which, the, which, which, the, which our public administration must espouse. Um, and if you look at section 195.1, B and H, 
it says that part of administration must be governed by the democratic values and principles enshrined in the constitution, including the following principles. B, efficient, economic, and effective use of resources must be promoted. H, good human resource management and career development practices to maximize uh, human, human potential must be cultivated. Now, if you look at section 38.1B also of the PFMA, uh, it echoes the same message, uh, particularly with, with regard to the general responsibilities of accounting officers. Um, and this section directs that the accounting officer for the department is responsible for the effective, efficient, economical and transparent use of resources of the department. Now, Chair, the point that we would like to uh, put very succinctly to the committee is that the fact that this matter is serving in court, Chair, does not sterilize the committee in terms of performing uh, its oversight functions uh, over, the, over, over, over the department. Uh, the, the department must report on how they are complying with this constitutional injunction. In, in other words, Chair, yes, we agree that the implementation of the arbitration award is a matter now which is serving before court, and of course that process must be respected. But we say that uh, the, the, the legislature, which is parliament in this instance, and the judiciary play two different roles. Uh, they, they must respect one another, and of course, uh, each one must be respected in terms of uh, how it how it operates it, it, in, in its own purview. But the, the point that we're, we're making, Chair, is that one of the days when people are going to hide behind the subject care rule, uh, uh, and I'm saying, Chair, the submission that we're making is that uh, Section 195, uh, 1 PL and H gives scope, I mean, to this committee. Uh, 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 and then joins uh, the department for that matter uh, to, 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 to account, because we know for a fact that there have been monies uh, which have been spent. Um, uh, of course, those monies uh, come from the public press. Um, uh, the, the, the picture painted in the paper, uh, it paints, it does, not, it does not give a good story. It, it paints a picture of a, of a department in sixes and sevens. Uh, I mean, sir, this matter has been with the department for, for, for more than six years now. Um, and, and I think for, 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 for the accounting officer to, to merely say that this matter is before court uh, goes against the, the grain, if I put it that way, of the, of the, of the, of the oversight uh, functions which this committee is constitutionally obliged uh, to discharge. So, so sir, I mean, in, in, in summer, I'm not going to, to take your time. Uh, the department has to report on, on how, how are they complying with section 195, 1B and H in terms of how they've been handling this matter, starting from 2015, Chair, up until today. Thanks, Chairperson. I'll end there for now. And my colleagues can, uh, can, can put a cent or two, I mean, if, uh, if there's anything that I left behind. Thanks, Chairperson. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, Mr. Tejane. I will give an opportunity to your colleagues to also make uh, additions if they have any other additions to make on the matter. Um, Chairperson, I, I don't think there's anything else we want to add to what Mr. Tejane said. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Jenkins, for that. We okay. I have the person on the other line, colleagues. I hope that um, uh, uh, you don't mind the the voices that are coming on the side. She is unable to join, so I've been able to link her through the 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 line. And uh, we have agreed, uh, um, honorable members, as well as the department, in line with the advice from our legal team as parliament, that we will be calling a follow-up meeting, uh, DG, to discuss the matter in line with uh, our advice. 
uh, this meeting will be called when we are calling the follow-up meeting on the report that we requested for you to come back and present to us the portfolio committee. We will move in that manner and request you, DG, to then move to the next item on the agenda. Chair, Chair before we go to the next item, um, I think there is a mistake here. Um, I, I, as a department, I would like to state it here that I do not agree with what the, 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 the advisor has said. First of all, I indicated even uh, on Tuesday that they, they just relied on the documents and the information that they've been given by that person. They didn't have our side of the story. And then secondly, this referring to section 195 of the constitution. We are a government department governed by legislation. The appointments and how you deal with, 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 with grievances is dealt with by the Public Administration Act and the Public Administration uh, uh, Regulations. So I, I, I think as a department, we, we, did, we beg to differ. Uh, we would like to uh, Parliament to get another opinion from other, other, others, or as a department, also we can go to the state or advisor to get an opinion. However, as a department, we do not agree with, 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 with uh, um, what he had said. Thank you, Chair. We will, uh, uh, in terms of what has happened from 1994, uh, Nondu Miso can say, this is what has happened from 1994. These were the processes that were followed. And we can uh, present that, that uh, 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 you know, a uh, um, chronology of what happened. But at the end of the day, the court will take a decision. And as indicated when uh, I started, the complainant went to court. She's the one who has to sit the matter down. She doesn't set the matter down because there are challenges, most probably. So one can just take the documents as they're put here. There are many things that need to be looked at. And as indicated also that I arrived in August and I've already started working with it. I indicated when I started that the matter is in court. However, also as a department, uh, we have now initiated a disciplinary uh, 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 process. So that is how the department is dealing with it. I had also indicated to the chairperson that uh, when she said, I've asked for an opinion uh, from the uh, 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 parliamentary advisors, and I said to the chairperson, that opinion will not apply because it's one-sided. And that's exactly what is happening. Thank you, Chair. Noted, noted. Uh, your concerns are noted, DG. But I think the biggest concern that we are having as a portfolio committee is what you have reported to us that this matter one has dragged on for quite some time. And secondly, we are saying that you are having an official who is presenting themselves at work, not taking instructions, not doing any work, but still earning over a million rand in terms of salaries for doing nothing. So now it's, it's, it's a public place that we are highly concerned about. And we'd also move again to Mr. Tekiani to assist us on this matter in, to, in terms of how then do we approach a matter such as this that has dragged on for plus minus six years, an official not taking any instructions, not doing work, but still earning a salary from uh, the public purse. Uh, good, good evening, uh, Chairperson, again. Look, look, Chairperson, what we are presenting to you is based on the documentation which was uh, given to us, uh, I, think, I think, during the course of uh, yesterday. Uh, we've, we've, we've read through uh, every piece of paper, Chairperson, uh, and I think uh, it's, 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 it's a balanced read in the sense that uh, we've, we've, we've read even the affidavits from the DG, from the... But look, the fact of the matter is that we respect the fact that this matter is serving before our courts. Uh, the DG speaks about the fact that they are government department and so we, 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 we agree with that, Chair, but she, she seems to be oblivious of the fact that the constitution is supreme and therefore uh, even the same pieces of legislation that he is referring to, Chair, uh, uh, stem, I mean, uh, from, 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 from the constitution itself. Now, the, 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 the reason why we came here um, is that we, 
who were given documentations here for purposes of trying to, 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 to work with the committee and the department, uh, of course, to see as to, uh, you know, what, what, what options, uh, what available options, I mean, can be explored. We respect the fact that there's a court process and we think that uh, we don't want to, to, be, to be on the wrong side, I mean, with that particular process. But the fact of the matter is that the committee chair uh, is, um, is, 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 is correct in terms of saying there is no way that where you have an official who goes to work, who gets paid, of course, from the public, from the public press, and, and, and we know from the documentation itself that this matter, I mean, has been dragging uh, for, about, for, for about six years now. Unfortunately, Chair, those answers will have to come from the department. Uh, from where we're sitting, I mean, the department will have to tell the committee that what we know and what is in front of us is the fact that this matter was referred to arbitration twice, Chair. And in that arbitration, I mean, the, 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 the department lost. Now we know that Chair, in the course of these matters, of course, we're not saying that because they lost there. But it seems as if, Chair, uh, from, from, from a management or leadership point of view, Chair, uh, that, that, that's why I, I said, Chair, it, it, it paints a picture to me, I mean, of, 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 of a department, Chair, that is in sixes and sevens. So that information, Chair, in order for you as a committee to make an analysis, will have to be gleaned from information that comes from the department. All I'm saying, Chair, is that it is not enough for the department, Chair, to hide behind the subject care rule uh, and try to sterilize the committee so the committee cannot ask further questions regarding this one. All I'm saying, Chair, is that the, the, the department uh, is enjoined, Chair, by the Constitution. It's not a matter of choice. It's enjoined by the Constitution to come to this committee uh, of parliament and, 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 and explain or rather um, uh, put the committee into its confidence regarding the scaffold between it and the GDG. Thanks, Chair. Leave it there for now. Thank, thank you. Thank you once again, uh, Mr. Kekane. Honorable members, uh, do you wish to make any comments on the matter? Okay. I'm not seeing any hands, uh, colleagues. DG, I'll hand over to you once again to then move to the next agenda item. Thank, thank you, Chair. Uh, we will sub submit a report on uh, which doesn't delve into issues, but we'll submit the report in terms of what what happened, and then items to follow up on the on the matters. Um, yesterday, there were questions that had been answered. Um, however, there are others which were not answered. I'll request DDG Shoki uh, to start um, on on some of the questions that were asked. Which they were not able to respond to. And DDG Ranji will follow here and then I'll call the others. DDG Shoki. Thank you, uh, DG, and good evening to the members of the Portfolio Committee and Chairperson. There was only one outstanding thing that I can recall uh, on m and &E, and as such, I did request Esther, Madam Esther to make an addition. We were then told that she can make an addition at today's meeting. Because she is not here, I would like to indicate and further clarify on the issues that relate to monitoring and evaluation, that we do have a monitoring and evaluation framework, which has been drafted to guide systems, as well as processes for tracking, assessing and reporting the results of the interventions as outlined in the National Strategic Plan to End Gender-Based Violence and Femicide. And the very framework outlines the theory of change, technical indicator definitions, data flow processes, the roles and responsibilities, and the requisite capacity to implement that framework. And finally, the consultation sessions on this draft framework and plans were already held at a national level, and now we are focusing on the government 
tiers that relates to the province and local level so that we, they can also provide further inputs on the document. Perhaps what I should do through your chair and uh, the permission of, of, of yourself and the DG, that because we are in, in a phase of consultation, that we send that MNE framework together with the plan. And <clears throat> we also consult through the portfolio committee and solicit inputs on their part. Then we will be in a position to say we have consulted all the relevant key stakeholders at a point when we then conclude and present it so that it becomes a final document that we can use and hold everyone accountable to it. Even those departments that were not initially included in the NSP before, because the NSP was crafted in a haste with so many role players, there's one or two departments that were not included, but we are further engaging them to include them now in the MNE, uh, the current MNE framework. That's it from me that I can recall that we did not respond to. The rest we had responded to. If there's anything indeed that I have, I might have forgotten, I'm more than willing to be reminded and I will provide the responses. Thank you, Chief. Thank, thank you, Chair um, um, Ranji. Uh, thank you, DG. Uh, good evening, uh, uh, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members. Uh, with, with, I, had, I do have a, a presentation that I could share in, and it would expand all of the uh, answers to the questions. Would I be allowed to share, please? I'm just, you've been made co-host. <laughs> Can the host uh, 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 give uh, Renji the sharing rights? Yes, she okay. has. All right. Are you able to see, Chair? Yes, we can see it. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, Chair, uh, the, one of the, the, the issues that was raised in the meeting was the issue on the MNE and what exactly is the department uh, focusing on in terms of its MNE work. So, I pulled together a a very short presentation, which I'd like to, to just expand on in terms of the work that is being done. Um, the m &E unit has three fundamental components of work that it's focusing on. One is on the coordination of the implementation of the gender responsive planning, budgeting, monitoring, evaluation, and auditing framework. And it's guided by an implementation plan that has been developed. Um, it's also uh, um, a monitoring the implementation of that uh, uh, framework. The second element that it focuses on is monitoring. And in terms of uh, this monitoring, we look holistically at socioeconomic transformation of women, youth, and persons with disabilities. But at the moment, um, we, 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 are, we are guided by a country gender indicator framework and we are looking at an incorporated framework um, on, the, on youth indicators and disability indicators. And the third element of the MNE unit uh, is the evaluation work. So they look, we look at evaluation of interventions or programs uh, on, the, on the socioeconomic transformation. And this is guided by a departmental evaluation plan, as well as the national evaluation plan that DP, DPSA, DPME agrees on. Um, in terms of actually coordinating the implementation of the gender responsive planning, budgeting, monitoring evaluation framework, um, it undertakes capacity building and advocacy work on this framework, uh, given that it was adopted by cabinet in 2019 and departments are beginning to understand it uh, and, and to slowly implement it. Um, so at the moment, uh, we, are, we are actually coordinating a series of high-level steering committee meetings and provincial meetings where we, we bring in the different departments together and we use this platform to engage with the departments in the provinces on this particular framework. And so it becomes a community of practice platform to aid the implementation of the framework. Now, the progress on the implementation of the framework is also being provided through this platform as one mechanism. And uh, this meeting, we, we try to coordinate once every two months. Uh, then we have a, a series of ad hoc presentations. At the moment, 
it's it's on this ad hoc basis but we're looking at a process where we can actually come up with a set schedule now what we do here is as we are being invited uh, by different departments and provinces and even municipalities we facilitate presentations on the framework um, and uh, we we do this as a form of capacity building but also advocacy and uh, this request is actually gaining momentum it's picking is being picked up by departments and so uh, and that is because we are also doing um, we issuing a self assessment tool uh, for departments to to assess themselves on the implementation of this framework and provide that feedback to us and that is then making them realize that they they need more help on this and uh, when we present quite often it's being done at the strategic meetings or the uh, exco meetings of departments so they they do involve the senior managers um, so we are facilitating the implementation plan uh, with uh, responsible institutions that are focusing on planning budgeting uh, monitoring and evaluation and auditing this work is being done targeted at uh, at the center of government departments and uh, even uh, we've we've already initiated with the ag's office so what we're doing here is we are looking up uh, the entire pillar uh, 10 pillars in line with the implementation plan and we focus on the planning area and 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 the budgeting area so we're working with the dpme uh, the national treasury um the cocta and uh, we look at uh, uh, you know in terms of of government's planning and budgeting cycle uh, in terms of the uh, monitoring of the socioeconomic transformation uh, this is a uh, work that we're looking at in terms of uh, reporting on progress being made against uh, 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 indicators and targets that are defined and these are targets and indicators that are defined across the seven mtsf priorities but also uh, within the national the international continental and regional instruments uh, to which we are committed as a country so so we've we drawn that and uh, we've put together all of these indicators with, within a document called at the moment the country gender indicator framework but when we when we are actually now monitoring like in this year we've we've taken a set of indicators and we are looking at it even in terms of youth and disability now one of the challenges we have with this area of work is the fact that we we really don't easily obtain disaggregated data by sex or age or disability and so we then also have to further collect data through a desktop literature review looking at reports that are published by the department um, we also are using reports that are on the DPME system and, 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 other, and other government's websites. So for 2021, we've we have decided to focus on the economic empowerment of women, youth and persons with disabilities and to look at what the progress is being made. For that, uh, we are concentrating on the indicators in priority two on the economic on the on the economy and we've included also those indicators from our international instruments so we have done um, the letters uh, from the dg to dg uh, in the different departments and we're requesting for the data and the responses to that uh, to those indicators and uh, the findings of this report will then be uh, presented to to the concerned departments so that and the provinces so that we can give them feedback but look at, at gaps and what more needs to be done to close the gaps so there is another element of work that the mne unit is focusing on and that's coordinating our departmental progress report on uh, on the mtsf and we have to do this twice in the in the year uh, six months uh, in and and then six months later so for that the the, the unit does work internally which is which is quite uh, extensive work because uh, you you've got to make sure that you have all the evidence and 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 so on so we do that and then we submit that after it's approved uh, the other area of work that the unit is focusing on 
is the COVID-19 report that we, we produce and we submit to the president. And this report is about uh, how women are benefiting from the COVID-19 relief uh, measures that were put in place. And, and of course, now in terms of the economic recovery and reconstruction uh, package. Uh, initially, the reports were supposed to be weekly, then it moved to monthly. And now it's, I think, gone to periodic reports on a quarterly basis. But this means that we coordinate and get the information from all the departments. And it's really very challenging here because of the lack of disaggregation of data. Um, in terms of the evaluation, now this one will also uh, uh, explain a little bit on the use of the consultant. Um, this year we are undertaking a formative evaluation, but we're looking at it in terms of the implementation of the gender responsive planning, budgeting, monitoring, evaluation framework across government. Um, the department so far has done this work internally, where we conceptualize this evaluation. We've developed the terms of reference. We've done literature review, and we've done this through desktop, uh, and we've analyzed that, and we've produced an inception report. So following from that, we now, we now need to undertake that evaluation. Now, the, the, the evaluation, number one, it needs to be across all the provinces and all the departments. But secondly, it's evaluating our own implementation. So it's very difficult to evaluate yourself when you are implementing. So for that particular purpose, we are sourcing an external service provider to help us to undertake that so that there is objectivity and independence in the evaluation. And uh, the evaluation will cover impl implementation across national and provincial departments. And because it's so extensive, this uh, unit is, uh, and, and this part of the work has just two direct people appointed. One is a director evaluation and one is a deputy director. So in terms of human capacity, it, it would be almost impossible to produce a, a good solid um, uh, you know, document, but uh, also independent. Um, then the department also uh, has to do its own departmental evaluation plan. That work is being coordinated within this uh, MNE unit. And um, uh, we've, we've already done a lot of this work here, but we are also assisting in terms of uh, developing the concept notes for each of the evaluations, because we need to submit all of this to DPME. And so far, uh, DPME has already agreed to three out of the four evaluations that will happen in the years to come. Uh, Chair, I will rest there. I, I have provided a, uh, an understanding of the m &E unit. Uh, it's, really, it's, a, it's a unit made up of six people, and I've tried to demonstrate the work that they're doing and why only in terms of the evaluation where we're looking at sourcing outside uh, uh, expertise. Um, Chair, then I can, I can move on uh, to, to share with you the research uh, work and, 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 and answer the questions. Thanks, Chick. Are, are you able to see this uh, slide? Yes, we can see it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so this one is on work on the Randy, research. Randy? Yes, ma? Yeah, um, my, uh, my apologies, uh, Honorable Masiko. Um, I just want to check with you. Why didn't you ask the Department of Monitoring and Evaluation to evaluate you? Okay. If uh, it's difficult for you as a department to evaluate yourselves. Why didn't you ask the Department of Monitoring and Evaluation to do that? Okay. Uh, Chair, no, thank you so much, Chair. Um, you see, uh, yes, of course, we work with the Department of Monitoring and um, Evaluation on, on all this work. 
but uh, the, the department doesn't, uh, DPME does not do any evaluations. It outsources all of the evaluations across government. It also is not a very big unit in there itself. It's bigger than us, but it's not big enough to carry out a, an evaluation on its own. So what it will do, it will come back to you and it will tell you, you need to fund uh, uh, this process and we'll outsource it. And that's how the evaluations have been done uh, over the past few years. Chair, I don't know if I've answered you adequately, but they will not do it for us per se. Okay, continue. Okay, thank you. All right, so what we're doing now is we are sharing with you uh, the work of the research unit, but also seeking to answer all the questions that were raised in the meeting on the 17th of August. Uh, the research unit is, is, is actually a sub, sub program that is focusing on research policy analysis and knowledge management. Um, and we also like the m and &E unit, we have now uh, focusing on gender, youth and disability, sensitive research, uh, knowledge management and in terms of policy analysis. So we are actually focusing on four areas of work uh, in the department. One is on research, knowledge management, policy analysis, but we also have undertaken uh, to compile uh, and pull together the international reports. Um, and in this unit, the staff complement is basically five people. Um, and, and I have been in this unit, but for now I am, I'm in the acting position. So the one director is acting chief director. He has one director, one DD, one admin officer and one secretary. And this staff is responsible for the four core areas of work. So in terms of research alone, um, the, the unit is responsible for conceptualization of research projects data collection, and this is mostly uh, our desktop work and development of research reports. Now, currently uh, we are engaged with three clear pieces of research at the moment. One is on um, looking at, uh, at the representation of women, uh, youth and persons with disabilities, uh, particularly at the leadership management position, but also in terms of control and ownership across uh, the JSE listed companies, the JSE listed top 100 companies and the top 100 unlisted companies, and then across the SOEs. And these SOEs are the ones mainly falling under DP, uh, Department of Public Enterprises. The second uh, research that we are, we, we are engaging on is the one on looking at how women, uh, youth and persons with disabilities are actually represented or participate across the, the, the large infrastructure projects in the country. And the idea is to obtain where are the entry points for these three sectors into value chain opportunities. And then the third piece of research we are looking at is the gender pay gap uh, across the public service, because we've been, uh, we've been made aware that they are still uh, uh, gender, gender gaps that are existing between men and women uh, on, on entry into the public service. Now, now, Chair, the first two projects we are doing in partnership with UN Women. Um, and so we are not actually funding those. It's being funded by UN Women, but we are driving these projects uh, uh, and, and, and working with UN Women and the, and the technical expertise. The gender pay gap is the research that we have undertaken as a department for which we need to pay. Now, the, the available human capacity in the unit does not allow us to carry out large scale research. And so we can only undertake research uh, uh, small scale and it's mainly desktop. So when it's a large scale research, then we are challenged. We are also challenged by the lack of uh, easily available disaggregated data uh, which can make uh, research easier. It's not there. So sometimes you need to source primary data and desktop becomes limiting. So um, uh, Chair, the scope of the research, the data collection strategy, data access, profile of respondents, et cetera, cannot be taken internally, undertaken internally, or it might require the use of consultants. 
So this, uh, we were trying to un, uh, respond to Honorable Sharif's question on how does the de department determine when a service provider is needed? So what helps us to, to decide when do we need to, uh, to take the research out is when you look at the scope and what it entails. Now I'll explain that through the second bullet point on the salary disparities in the public service. The reason why we need uh, assistance in this regard is that we need an understanding and a knowledge of remuneration, remuneration, sorry, job evaluation, grading, human resource policies and practices amongst other issues. And then also the, the data is available on the PASAL data uh, system, which is with DPSA. But we need to mine that data out of that PASAL system, which is covering at a minimum 1.2 million public service employees by age, by disability, by gender. And then you got to look at when they entered, at what level they entered, what did they earn then, et cetera, et cetera. And this is also being done across all departments, but also all provinces. So it's got an extensive amount of work and um, th this particular unit will not be able to cope with this kind of analysis, uh, data source and analysis within the, the financial year itself. So the scope of the research um, is, is therefore asking us to look at how we're going to do this, but also then conduct interviews with senior managers um, across the public service. And, and, and be able to then also focus on all the other pieces of work that that unit has to do. So that uh, is the reason why for this research, we were, we were looking at outsourcing uh, for the service provider. Um, Sanjay, so I also- Sanjay, that's great. Um, yes, you know, I'm trying, yes, yes. To, I'm trying to listen to what you are presenting, presenting in these um, ads we're talking to now and uh, starting from where you are saying you're working with you and uh, uh, women um, if I may ask you since you are responsible for this is this a temporal uh, uh, is it uh, is this a permanent solution or a temporal solution mm -hmm. and, uh, if it's not a permanent solution you've been having this problem for how long two three uh, have you ever sat down with the dg together with the uh, 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 minister and the uh, dm and discuss all these things that you are presenting today so that you can come up with a permanent solution because from a person like myself who's listening to what we are presenting now, uh, you see, you are making me to be uh, 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 not settled and um, you are making me to be more worried on how is this department going to move forward in ensuring that monitoring and evaluation is done to all government departments and entities and also even private sector at some point yes what you are presenting to me now it makes me to feel to think that it's like you know we are standing the department is stagnant and uh, it's like there is no willingness to change the status quo because if this is, has been a problem for a long time, why are you not sitting down with the, 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 the director general, the minister and the deputy minister, and whoever is supposed at, at a senior uh, uh, management level, whoever is responsible uh, so that you can sit down and come up with a, 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 a a tangible or a permanent solution because looking at the research that you were you are t telling us about uh, now uh, if you're saying you're, you and your women 
it, it, it means at one stage that those research uh, UN women can claim that no, no this is what we are doing it uh, for ourselves. It's not for the department. So I, I, I want to get a sense on what uh, 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 the, the, the department, you know, we, you need to make us to be confident as the portfolio committee that you as the department, you, are do, uh, 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 you, are, you have capacity to do all these things and that you are doing all these things that you, you've been presenting. Because you see, once you present a, a report that makes us as members of the portfolio committee to be doubting and not uh, uh, being confident on what you are doing as a department, uh, uh, this whole thing, it's, it's, it's going to be a problem for us. And I'm, I'm starting to, 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 you know, I'm, I'm, I was looking at where you were even saying you are an acting, you are an acting chief director. You were saying what? No, uh, the chief director in research is acting chief director because I'm acting as the DDG at the moment. Yeah. Why would you have an acting person? For how long has that position been a vacant? And why uh, 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 that position? Because it's a critical position. When you do the reprioritization of, of, of position, why are you not sitting down with the DG and, uh, 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 and just talk to the DG and say, you know what, before, and the head of human resource, that these are some of the positions that you feel strong that it needs to be filled. Okay, Chair, thank you. Um, yeah. <laughs> I want to understand exactly why are you outsourcing? Okay. You know, I want to be convinced. For now, you've been presenting, but I'm not convinced. That's why I'm asking you these questions now. Okay, Chair. Um, yeah, I think the presentations that I'm making is 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 uh, is about enlightening the 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 committee on the work of these two sub programs. Now, the question, the first question, chair, about the first two research being done with UN women, it's actually we don't, we temporary. Don't to be, we don't want to be enlightened. We want to get uh, uh, the correct facts, you know, uh, yes. uh, because. Uh, uh, we, you seem to be comfortable, and that's where it, I, 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 my worry comes from. Chair, uh, if I may be allowed, my hand has been up. It's it, it's me. Okay, DJ. I would like to come in. Chair, right. I I presented. I think it was in April, May, May, or whenever when we came to the portfolio committee. I presented uh, on the resources of the department, comparing them with those of DPME. I think the biggest challenge, and I am not afraid to say it, I will say it wherever I am, I, that one I'm not going to be afraid to say, the issues of women, uh, the way women are being treated, it's even the same in government because the, our department was, was established the same time as DP, DPME. But women's issues were, were, were seen as maybe not important or whatever. The structure, the way it was, it was structured by, DP, D, by DPSA and, and the National Treasure, it's what is resulting in us not being able to do the work. I presented that I mean, indicated that uh, DPM is work, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the staff composition is three times ours, uh, the staff mm. composition structure, and the budget, their budget is big. Far, far much bigger than ours. They have systems to do monitoring. They, they don't capture information like our people. Our people, because we don't have systems, we don't have money to buy systems, they do things manually. And a, a DPME focuses on government only. It's looking at a, a national, yes, provincial, and local, and local government. We also, on our part, we're supposed to be monitoring lo national, local, and a, 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 a provincial. We also have to the pay the pay gap uh, research. Um, we decided that we're not going to do it as we are supposed to do it. We thought let's start with public service because it's easier to look into the public service. The pay yeah. gap is in the minister's performance contract with the president. So which means 
he didn't say public service. He said pay gap. We must address the issue of pay gap. That means we must also do it in private sector. That department cannot even begin. We don't have provincial yeah. presence. We have we don't have all those things. And ever since I've arrived, I've, I've, we have uh, looked at the at the structure to look at what would be appropriate. We are not even yeah. asking what DPME has. We are asking half of what DPME has. DPSA refuses, National Treasury refuses. So women's issues are not taken serious. So it's beyond our control. We know, I know about the challenges that uh, 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 Ms. Reddy is talking about and the minister is aware. However, as a department, we've decided that we will not sit down and say, um, because we don't have people, we don't have the budget, then we're not going to be able to implement. We, that's why either we will enter into partnerships or the, 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 the EU and the others that she's talking about, they, there, is, there are contracts which are, are coordinated by the National Treasury um, with the developmental uh, uh, partners. So EU is going to give a, a, a budget to the department for the next three years, at least it augments. But normally they focus on what they want to focus on. They'll tell you that we want to focus on, 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 on gender-based violence. We want to focus on gender budgeting or whatever. That is what helps us and also to help us to be able to function, not just at national, but also at provincial and local government, because then we will be able to appoint somebody who will then focus on the provinces. But there's a structure. We're not structured to be able to do that. Hence, yeah. always, the last time when I presented at the portfolio committee, I said I request the portfolios, the portfolio committee's assistance because uh, we will not be able to achieve what the, what the portfolio committee. In fact, what the portfolio committee wants from us is even bigger than that. When we come here, they'll tell you, in KZN, this is happening. Why are you not there? But also in different topics and whatever, we will not be able to achieve that as we are. Yeah. However, we've already appealed to the portfolio committee for assistance in terms of, of, of uh, resources and personnel. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Thank you very much, DG. I think, uh, DG, this is one of the matters that we need to take up with our, 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 our leadership. Ne? So uh, maybe um, our we'll have to have a, a, a meeting to strategize on how what what approach are we going to use in order to address this one and, and thank you very much for uh, uh, being frank and honest with us so that uh, we can understand uh, 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 what what are your uh, what are your challenges regarding that Okay. Okay, thank you, DG. Unless there are other members who want to ask who raise their hands. Uh, yes, Chairperson, I've got my hand raised up. Okay, Honorable Sharif, and who else? Is it Honorable Sharif only, Honorable Members? Okay. Okay, Honorable Sherry. Thank you, Chair, and good evening to honorable members and to the department. Um, Chairperson, my one is pretty simple. Um, Ranji said that they don't, the department does not have access to desegregated data in terms of um, women information um, and, and, you know, gender, age place of residency, all of that sort of thing. How is that possible, Chairperson? I would imagine that the department um, that has been in existence for a very long time would have some sort of database where they're able to get such information so that we're able to you know, work towards it. For example, if the department doesn't have stats on how many women are raped in South Africa, if the department doesn't have stats on um, the, the extent of gender-based violence and femicide, domestic abuse, hate crimes towards the LGBT, if they don't have a database where they can easily access information, it makes me a little bit worried because how then do they inform any research or any program or any project um, if they don't have access to, to information. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, 
Eranji. Thank you, Ma. Um, yeah, L let me address that. I think maybe uh, I, I didn't come across clearly. I, I did not say the department does not have access to disaggregated data. I say that the department is not able to easily obtain disaggregated data. Remember that, that uh, we are not the generators of primary data because we are measuring certain indicators that is being measured uh, in terms of obtaining private data, uh, uh, primary data by different departments. Now, what happens in some of the departments is that they don't necessarily collect that data in terms of age or, or disability, or even sometimes in terms of males and females. So in some areas, you're not able to get easily obtainable disaggregated data. Uh, you, we, we, we obtain uh, our data from other departments who are the implementing agents. Um, where, where we need to generate our own data would be where we will undertake our own research. And, and sometimes we are reporting and, and not necessarily needing to generate our own data. So there's that slight difference. Um, and, and if, and if any time uh, we're seeking information, it's not always easy to get it uh, in terms of disaggregation. That was what I was raising. I don't know whether oh. I'm, I'm, I'm clear, Chair. Yeah, Ranji, um, I'm, I'm, I'm having a problem with your response because now I'm asking myself, so how do you compile the country's report on treaties like CEDA? Yeah. We, we, See, uh, the, uh, uh, Chair, when we, when we are compiling country reports, we, we go through a whole process. We seek uh, the, the responses to specific questions from specific departments. And then we, we uh, as the department, collate our responses to that question uh, in terms of the treaty. So for example, if there is an issue on economic empowerment and they want to understand how many women are SMME owners or, or women-led SMMEs, we would get, we would obviously get that information from the Department of Small Business Development. So that's how you will compile your international reports. Does that answer the question, uh, Chair? Yeah, I hear uh, you. If, Chair, if I may be allowed also to add, it's okay. a national problem, the issue of disaggregated information is a national problem. It's South Africa that is a, a failing to our, like the government system that is failing to produce disaggregated information because of the systems that they have. Um, some of them are archaic, so they've not yet been, been uh, uh, renewed so that the information that is based in the system is retrieved. Uh, indicating age, because this is what we are always asking from them, that the information that they keep should uh, address issues of race, gender, age, and, and where possible space, so that we know people in rural areas and people in townships and all those things. So it's not a department's problem. It's, it's, it's government's problem. Thank you. Okay, DG, so you are getting those, you are getting those reports quarterly or, 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 or what? In some instances, uh, departments would give you disaggregated information where they, they have, but most departments, they, they can't give you. They'll just tell you that our system doesn't store it in that way. So it, it, it's a bigger problem. It's something that we discuss even in the DG clusters um, that we, we need a new system. There's, there's, there's a test team that has been established that is looking at government IT system and information management. Um, that is under the FOSAT cluster because it's a big problem. And it's not just the problem for this committee. It's just a, pro a problem, I think, for many committees that um, disaggregated information, as Ranji had said, that raw data comes from a government department. When the information says four people have been arrested and they say we can't uh, uh, disaggregate, I'm just making an example, uh, mm. and they say we can't aggregate. So when uh, who use the information, you can't then some suck and say, I think two was whatever. So it, it's a problem that is bigger than the department. Okay. And Chair, to add, we, we are able to access 
uh, uh, the data on the DPME um, uh, system where they obtain it quarterly from departments. So that is one source, but that data itself is not always disaggregated. Um, we also are using our own system uh, from the department in terms of the monitoring tool uh, that we're trying to obtain uh, data from uh, departments, and that is also on a quarterly basis. Um, as we develop our system, uh, maybe we would be able to even go um, monthly, but uh, you know, you'd get a lot of complaints that departments are suffering from uh, reporting fatigue. But at least at the moment, we are obtaining some of the information from the DPME system and some of it directly engaging with the departments. But they are, uh, where there are gaps, we try to work with Stats uh, South Africa. Uh, we also look at, uh, and we do our own uh, scanning of uh, reports and annual reports um, uh, of each department so that we can, we can actually pick out the information ourselves. Yeah, issues for the department issues that we were discussing today because uh, for us they are most importantly uh, especially for us when we do our oversight some of the things that we need to, to know on what Chair, you you were breaking yeah, up, but I yeah. okay. You can yeah. continue. Uh, Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um so so um uh, oh, you did no um, I was yeah. You can continue. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Yeah. So so I, I was I was trying to, to also respond. I was I was, I was saying, oh you hear you heard me. Yeah, I, I, a little bit of what you said, uh, uh, Chair, it broke, most of it was cut off. Chair, I'm no longer hearing you. Emphasizing. Okay, thank you. That <laughs> May I go on, Chair? All right. Yeah. Con go continue. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Chair. So, so, so in uh, in uh, answering the questions um, uh, that were raised uh, in the meeting on the 17th, one of the questions from Honorable Sharif was uh, on the gender pay gap report was done in quarter four and then again. I think uh, that was uh, perhaps a mistake uh, in, in, in observation uh, on the report because that was not the case. Um, uh, actually, the, the, the gender pay gap uh, research is, is initiated in this financial year. The quarter four target was actually a, a report on the gendered impact of COVID-19, uh, which was done in-house. Um, and then uh, the question was asked, why does the depart what what does the department oof, my internet connection has become unstable? What does what does the department do to increase its capacity? As DG was raising, uh, we are trying to collaborate with other government departments, but also with development partners and uh, research institutions uh, uh, in order to be able to execute some of the research uh, uh, work that is being done or to become partners to a research. Um, so where we partner on a research with no payment, um, or we, we source funding and technical assistance from development partners. And uh, as Gigi was talking about, the EU uh, Gender Equality Women Empowerment Program that is running through Treasury, we're trying to source money from there and, and be able to do some of, and execute some of the work in the department. But we last year, as we began last year, we partnered with uh, UNIDO um, and uh, the DTIC 
to undertake a research on women in the green economy. And the, it was completely funded by UNIDO, but the work is being completely in the control of government departments. And Minister, I think two weeks ago, even launched that report. Um, so those are just some of the examples of the work we're doing. Um, even uh, we've partnered with the DPME in terms of the national COVID-19 report, where we, we played a big role in the chapter on, the, on, on, the, on gender and, and COVID-19. Um, and then in terms of the question on research reports, which needs to be shared with the committee, we absolutely agree with that. And uh, we'll close the gaps where they exist. So I just want to point out that we did share research reports um, um, in hard copy. We sent them to the committee on the incentive schemes uh, particularly those in the DTI. We shared the B plus 25 report and the fifth periodic CEDAW report. But if uh, that is still a gap, we will we'll close that gap. We have now completed publishing our 25 year review report, uh, which uh, we can also then make hard copies available to the committee. But the, the, the report on women and the green economy at the moment is not uh, published in hard copy. Uh, I can send the portal details to the committee secretariat and committee members can, can download uh, that report uh, for themselves. I think I'm frozen. Okay. Um, so, so Chair, the next piece of work that the research unit uh, or rather that, uh, that sub-program is undertaking is international reporting. So we are responsible for the development, <coughs> excuse me, of reports on compliance and uh, we do all of this uh, uh, de development of reports in-house. Um, the information and the data for these reports are obtained mostly from, as we had already explained, administrative data from, uh, from departments and, uh, and research uh, uh, documents that are available. Um, we, uh, it's repeating there. So in response to Honorable Sharif's question on why do we get a consultant for report writing, uh, we don't, Chair. The report writing in terms of international reporting is done in-house. Uh, if there is an, a, a, an, a, an external service provider on a research report, then they would, they would produce their findings in the form of a, of a report. Um, in, in terms of uh, um, the ex, uh, international reporting, we also then uh, need to consult on those reports. Uh, with external stakeholders so we can validate them. And then uh, I, I've listed here some of the challenges we have uh, in terms of the large number of ad hoc requests for reporting that comes onto the, onto the desk. Uh, and these are given a very short time frame. And we also get requests from other departments uh, for us to write the chapter in their reports. Uh, which is responding to women. So it's quite a, a heavy workload on that unit. Uh, then we look at policy analysis and, and, and we really don't do justice to this work, Chair, because we don't have enough capacity to focus on that. So we only respond to, to like draft policies or draft legislation. Um, but what we are doing as a unit at the moment is in the APP is we are looking at reviewing the national policy framework in line with the, the changes that have happened uh, in, the, in the last few years. And we are also looking at the development of a gender mainstreaming strategy. At the moment, we are, we are, we are doing this in-house, but it's, it, these are huge undertakings which will, which will require larger budgets as we move along. We also focus on knowledge management and we, are, we have embarked on the establishment of a, of a, of a knowledge hub and we can't do this work as fast as we would like to because we lack the skills and the know-how and the expertise within the department. So we need to outsource this work and outsourcing is, is expensive, but, and it means we need the budget. So we try to work small stages at a time and we're looking at, uh, at the moment, the technical design of the, of the hub um, for, for this year. Uh, so there is the in the last question, uh, Chair, was a question raised by the Honorable Masondo on the department's progress on MTSF priorities, the SDGs and Agenda 2030. I, I've kept my answer very short, 
I, I, I'm hoping it, it is actually responding to the question as, as it was raised. Um, in terms of the MTSF, the department is responsible for cross-cutting priorities one to seven. Uh, the department has developed a, the midterm report and submitted to the DP, uh, sorry, the DPME. Uh, there is progress that is being that is being made on many of the indicators. However, there is still more to be done towards meeting the targets that are outlined in the MTSF. Uh, progress is recorded in priority one on the institutionalization of the GRPB MEA framework. Under priority two on women's economic empowerment, we are, we are talking about some of the work that's being done. Uh, in priority four, uh, we are looking at the issue of, of the progress being made in terms of the sanitary dignity program. In priority six, the issue of the NSP on the GBVF. And on priority seven, we focus on the international, continental, and regional participation and reporting. Uh, but there are many, many gaps that still exist. So in the next six months, uh, we, we, when, we, when, we are, when we are assessing again the progress made, we will need to see how far we have moved and what the gap still is and what more needs to be done to meet the yearly targets, let alone towards the five-year target. In terms of the SDGs, especially SDG 5 on women's empowerment and gender equality, um, these indicators within SDG 5, we have fundamentally incorporated them across the MTSF, but we, uh, we also have incorporated those indicators within our own monitoring uh, uh, gender indicator framework so that we are, we are monitoring on that. Now, in terms of the SDG reporting, it's an aggregated report by, uh, for the country and it's done um, at a, at a, at the, it's coordinated by Stats SA uh, and DPME, and we work with them, particularly on reporting on SDG 5. Um, at, uh, so the last report was done in 2019, uh, and, and I guess we will be uh, required to produce the next one probably later in this year. But uh, in terms of SDG 5, all of the work that's uh, expected there is is spread across our MTSF and our own monitoring. But of course, within that, again, there are still gaps because there are some areas where we haven't even uh, begun to, to be able to do and have much impact as a department. Uh, Chair, I will, I will leave it there. I have tried to answer all the questions. I hope I have done so adequately. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, there, there were questions about our finance, uh, uh, things that finance CFO has to respond to. So I would request the CFO to respond and it will be the last answers. Uh, CFO. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, uh, uh, DG. There was a question uh, around the quality assurance on uh, service uh, providers. And the DG partly uh, responded to explain that uh, all service providers are registered on CSD through National Treasury and National Treasury is responsible for administration of, uh, of the CSD uh, system. However, internally in the department, when we conduct a, 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 a procurement, uh, we do a quality assurance and looking at the following areas uh, to verify whether the supplier, the prospective supplier that we intend to appoint is not uh, restricted to do a uh, business with government and whether the shareholders or members of the company are not employees of government. We also look at uh, the, uh, the issue of tax to ensure that uh, service providers that we appoint are in good standing with uh, SARS and we uh, further also verify their triple BEE status. If upon the quality assurance uh, process that we conduct, uh, the service provider is not compliant in one of the identified areas, more than one, and also 
we, we do not uh, uh, consider the service provider for appointment. The other question was in relation to number of beneficiaries on the money that is spent by the department in terms of NYTA. The expenditure that reflects on the books of the department in relation to NYTA, it relates to the tranche A amounts that we transfer to NYDA on a quarterly basis in line with the projections that are agreed upon between the department and NYDA. And uh, once this money is uh, transferred to NYDA, NYDA, NYDA will then disaggregate uh, this money in terms of their uh, salaries as well as their operational cost. And in implementation of their program, where there are beneficiaries participating in any of the programs, the NYDA will have the data in terms of uh, uh, how many beneficiaries benefited for, from the programs that uh, they are implementing. Thank you, DG. Thank you, Chair. Chair, I had forgotten. Uh, there were questions about our website. Uh, first of all, I would like to introduce our new director, Le Le Malebu, Malebu Kube. Uh, she will respond to, to, to the issues of the website. Um, I know, Chair, that I kept on saying by this day, it will be working by this day. Um, it was a shell with nothing. So she will she will explain where we are now. We have done a lot very soon. It will, the, 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 the system will be working. Uh, Ms. Malebu Kube. Uh, thank you, DG. Uh, good evening, Chairperson. Good evening, colleagues. Good evening, members. Um, okay, so with regards to the website, um, the current status at as it stands, uh, Chairperson, is that uh, we have finalized the specification and then it was supply chain for them to advertise an RFQ to appoint a service provider to do the development of the website and the intranet and also the support and maintenance. Why the delay that the website is currently not um, running? Uh, when I joined the department last month, uh, July 15th, uh, the department was already in engagements with CETA, um, uh, requested them to um, provide a proposal for the development, the maintenance and the hosting of the website and the intranet. Um, and then when I arrived, CETA had actually given the department the proposal, but the proposal was only to develop the website. It excluded the intranet, and it also excluded the voice component feature that the disability branch had requested for. And because of that, also the pricing that CETA um, provided was quite exorbitant. Um, and then after engaging with the Chairperson of the ICT Strategic Committee, uh, we then decided that we will approach the market uh, to do a cost comparison. And uh, we have since did, that, um, did the specification. And as I say that currently they're with the supply chain to send to service providers. And um, we're hoping that by the end of September, the end of quarter two, we should at least have the, the website up and running. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Malibu. You are welcome. And thank you for, for, the, for the feedback. Um, at, at, at DG, I wanted to ask the CFO um, two questions. Whether uh, they have appointed, um, they fill the vacancies that were vacant in her division. Uh, chair, must I respond? Yes, Chair. 
Uh, in, in the office of the CFO, we had a, a, a funded vacancy of the director SCM, which was appointed uh, last year. She assumed duty yes. uh, on the 1st of uh, October. And also to note that uh, uh, the department uh, 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 with the current establishment, as the DG has indicated, when the department was established, uh, the, the, the post within the office of the CFO are not aligned to the uh, recommended structure in the office of the CFO uh, by national uh, treasury. And uh, we do not have leverage to increase uh, the number of posts given the budget reductions that were introduced by national treasury during uh, the adjustment budget period uh, in 2020-21 financially. And over the 2022 NTF period, we are hoping that when the economic climate uh, changes uh, in favor of the fiscals of the country and uh, treasury, when we give the money back to the department after a three year period and with the reorganization uh, that is currently taking place in the department of the uh, or, uh, structure, uh, we will be able to, to obtain uh, additional resources. Currently, we are limited in terms of financial uh, resources to have a fully uh, 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 capacitated uh, chief directorate in the office of the CFO. But we do appreciate the appointment of the director SCF, which uh, 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 brought uh, more changes and improvements in the operations of the chief directorate. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, um, uh, Honorable Sheriff. Um, Chairperson, thank you so much. The reason why my hand is up is because <clears throat> in the presentation response to PC on APP, um, they speak about the use of consultants. And one of the, the, the reasons they pointed to was report writers an organizational strat plan. And this is where my question for Ranji comes, is if you say you do reports in-house, then what is meant by report writers um, as used for consultation? Is that the research um, that you mentioned, or is this um, the actual writing of reports, as well as what is meant by the organizational strat plan? Thank you, Chair. Okay, uh, uh, Ranji, uh, I wanted to comment on the CFO first. That uh, you see, CFO, we don't want you to uh, behind this thing of lack of resources and balance so to fill critical vacancies, and then at, at the end of the day. Um, the money that is being rolled back to to treasury because it will be very harsh with you that you if you see uh, when you, we look at your 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 your, your appropriation your, your budget uh, 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 appropriation from the national treasury it's 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 not enough it's not adequate and uh, uh, we are not expect we are expecting you to use all the funds that you are being uh, 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 allocated as the department we are not expecting your department that uh, uh, there will be money that will be rolled back to national treasury so you must because uh, if, if, if there's money that will be rolled, so I, I get worried when you, 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 you responded the way you responded now. CFO? DG, is your hand up? CFO? No, no. 
Yeah, uh, uh, it's okay. CFO, may you come in? Uh, and uh, just, uh, uh, your, 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 your comment is noted, Chair, but I need to uh, upfront a report to the committee that in terms of, uh, uh, remember we presented quarter four and quarter one of the current financial year. In the 2020-21 uh, financial year, uh, in our presentation, we did report that the department uh, 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 reported an underspending, which was mainly on goods and services. And truly so, the spending of the department was highly affected by the COVID-19 uh, 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 restrictions that had a, 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 an impact on the implementation of those activities and engagements with stakeholders that required physical engagement. We will strive a, a chairperson in this current financial year to ensure that uh, we accelerate our expenditure and ensure that uh, uh, under the circumstances, uh, there won't be any uh, 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 underspending. It will, if there is any, it will be a, a very material amount. And uh, to also report that the DG is also through our management committee meetings, is uh, monitoring spending through these meetings and uh, putting emphasis on management to ensure that they uh, accelerate and ensure that they spend the budget that is allocated to their respective units. Thank you, Chairperson. Yeah. Um... And 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 um, I think honourable members have 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 heard what you said, and at least on behalf of the committee, I've expressed our concern also. And 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 I think DG, the other thing that I was I wanted to raise with you was the issue of uh, the BDG that the person can be earning money that the person have not worked for. So uh, it can be correct that you have an official in your department that refuses to take orders whilst you are awaiting uh, the case in court. But we are expecting that uh, the, 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 the official in, in the department must be doing some work. There's no way that we'll be having a person not working and you will say, I'm working, I'm still waiting for the outcome of the court. Whilst there's a lot of work looking at that unit where Aboramji uh, uh, are and that unit, yeah, unit Aboramji, uh, uh, they need. Uh, 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 a, 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 a human resource there. So uh, you need uh, to allocate that uh, uh, that person to do some job uh, so that at least a, a taxpayer's money must not be end for nothing. There's no way that as the portfolio committee will support that. Um, so thank, thank you, Chair. This, this thing of yeah, with this thing of a person not wanting to take orders, there's no way to allow it as the portfolio committee. For us, that one it's a, a serious case. It cannot be correct. You know, you 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 register your grievance. You also whether it's in court or to a, a dispute or whatever. But uh, when you are there and you are a public uh, 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 servant earning the taxpayer's money, you need to work for the money that you're earning. Agreed, Chair. So, Gigi, we need to get a a report on what is it that you are doing? It's not a position whereby we can risk about it. That must do work in the department. You can't. 
have a, 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 a divisions of branches that are sort of stuff of personal where you depend who's doing thing, but it that cannot where well, that is for there's no way that will allow any individual to be earning a salary of more than 1.6 million and not doing nothing. And there's no way that a person will not take orders from her seniors and say, and, and he can turn All of us we are working. Then if a person at he doesn't want to take orders, then it's another story. But for us hearing such GG as unacceptable, we will give and say, this is the work that I have allocated to the DDG. And then the DDG must tell us the reasons why is she refusing to take those uh, 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 the work that has been allocated to her. Everybody must account. I'm sure DDG that one is clear. Over to DG. DG. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. I agree with you, Chair. I think uh, this matter had been left for a long time. Hence, when I arrived, I, when I arrived, I didn't get there and just said, they say you are not doing this or that. I, I, I tried to negotiate and, 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 you know, mediate so that because you can't just get to, to a company and fire somebody and because people are women, you want to, to bring them on board. However, it failed. So I, I am following the processes of uh, misconduct. So we are charging here. That's why at that time I was saying there is a court process, but also there's a misconduct uh, process. So the court process was initiated to hold the department ransom, but the department can act if there's a court process. However, I understand that the department can act. So that's why as a department, we are acting. Uh, the DPSA has already appointed uh, the relevant people to deal with the matter. So um, the, what uh, uh, when, when you were kicked off, uh, uh, Honorable Masite, when she was chairing, she said, we are asking you to, to give us a report that says from when to when, what happened, and then uh, what are you doing? So it will not go into substantive legal issues that are uh, in court, but it will give you a clear indication of uh, what happened when, when, and the date where uh, I've met with her when I took over in August, so that I, I bring her on board and make sure that she works with us. Uh, so we'll give you that report. However, the process of disciplinary hearing proceeds, and with her, with her court, whether she proceeds or not. That's, that's a, a prerogative because she's the initiator of the court process. We can't do anything. We've submitted everything. Then she decided to hang on on the case, but the disciplinary hearing will proceed. Thank you, no, Chair. Uh, yeah, no, it's fine, DG, because uh, 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 truly speaking, uh, if uh, a person has been earning money, government money, uh, without uh, doing any job, so that means uh, we have to deal with this matter differently. Honorable Sharif? Honorable Sharif? Yes, um, thank you, Chair. Chair, I may, I may have missed it because I did join the meeting late, but I just wanted to find out how long has the court proceedings been happening? Um, specifically, if it's been going on for such a long time, uh, when was the court? When when did it? When did this happen? 
she initiated the matter last year. Um, okay. So she, she mm. submitted the affidavit. We responded. She submitted the, re the reply, and then she just sat with the matter. So the matter is still pending in court. However, uh, because that's the matter initiated by her, but in terms of the public service administration, we have to start with a, a we have to do the, 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 the normal disciplinary uh, 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 processes. So the fact that she has a matter in court doesn't hold us ransom. Normally it's what people believe. However, it doesn't hold us ransom. The court process must take its own uh, uh, processes. However, the, the, the DPSA processes must take their own course. So that's exactly what we're doing. We are in that process of a disciplinary uh, process. Oh, okay. Um, thank you very much, uh, DG. Um, any other member? Is there any hand, honourable members? No, I don't. Masondo, you want to speak? No, Chai. Uh, I'm covered. As uh, my question was answered. Although there are so many issues that are coming out, but I am okay. Okay, Babu Ngobo. Honorable Ngobo. Yeah, I'm covered. Uh, okay, thank you, Babu Ngobo. Honorable Natasha. Honorable Sonti. I'm covered, Chair. Okay, okay, ma. Uh, Honorable Masiko. Masiko. Yes, Chair, thank you. I'm here. Uh, thank you, Chair. Okay. Honorable Ma. Thank you. Uh, Honorable Ma. Shengwa. Ubanengambalang. Laptop, is a uh, I, I think honorable members, if all of you are covered, uh, we have come to the end of our meeting. Angit Masiko, am I correct? Yes, yes, Chair, you are correct. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, DG. Um, it's Sorry, Chair. Yes. I didn't yes. see the attention of previous minutes in the agenda. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, DG, and your your your, your team. Uh, I think uh, in other matters uh, we have agreed. Uh, Honorable Masigo have briefed me that. Uh, uh, you will be giving us a, a, a report, a full report, a, a comprehensive report in terms of the the other report, Yaga Chief Director, and then you will also inform us uh, on the on the outcome, ye, ye, ye court case say no, and uh, uh, the disciplinary actions that have taken as the uh, uh, department. Uh, you are excused. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Thank, yes. thank you, honorable members. Thank you for having us. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, let's, yeah. Let's continue. And honorable members, uh, here are the minutes of the of June 2021. Uh, I take it that you have read uh, 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 these minutes, honorable members, because they were distributed long time ago, if I'm not mistaken. Any comments, honorable members?
Honorable members, any comment, any correction, any addition, amendments? Chair, we don't have comments. Uh, we have gone through the minutes and uh, they are a true reflection of the discussions and deliberation of the meeting. Okay. Okay. Can I get a second now? Um, uh, Honorable Masiko was moving for the adoption of the minutes. Can I get a second now? Honorable Shongo. Chair. Honorable, yes. In terms of procedure, I'm not sure whether I can move because I pick up that I was the acting chairperson of that, that uh, specific meeting. Oh, okay. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, sure. Hey, it's Honorable Masondo here. I move the adoption of the minutes as true reflection of what transpired from the previous minutes meeting. Thank you. Okay, can I get a seconda? Mendy? Hey, person? Uh, can you go up uh, so that you, I can see, uh, I can read? Members mm. were present that day. Oh. I second, Chairperson. Thank you very much, Mabungo. The minutes of the 2nd June 2021 are duly attached. Honorable Masiko. Yes, Honorable Chair. Yes, can I get uh, um, um, uh, any addition, any amendment, any correction? No. I am here, we're adopting the report. Ne? Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Can I get a, a, a move for the adoption of the minutes? Thank you, Chair. I move for the adoption of the minutes as a true reflection of the meeting of the 15th of July, 2021. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. Uh, can I get a second? Honorable Sheriff. Uh, Chair, I don't think I can. Oh, oh, this was the report no, back from the NYBA. No, I'm just getting a little bit confused. <laughs> Uh, 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 this one—it's when we adopt, we, we were adopting the the report as the portfolio committee. Yeah, a true reflection. 
Yes, they are. I did go through it, Chair. Yeah. You and uh, uh, Nobo and Mamson, you were part of the meeting, uh, Honorable Songo. And where is Honorable Song? Honorable Sheriff? Yes, Chairperson. Yeah, I need a second. Yes, Chair, I, I said I second it, Chair. Perhaps I need to say I hereby second these minutes as a true. <laughs> <trip. laughs> I do hear you. Good chair, I didn't hear anything you said, eh? Your connection is bad. Okay, honorable members, the chair has been kicked out of the meeting. Mandy, do we have any other sets of minutes that need to be adopted? No, no, Ms. Masiko, it's just the three sets. Okay, thank you very much, honorable members. We have attended to the last item of, on our agenda, which was to adopt the minutes. There being, there being no other business uh, on our agenda for today brings this meeting to a close. The meeting is officially closed. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you, bye. Bye.